Hey guys, it has been quite some time since I've done a video where I talked and not just uh, sped it up, but slowed it down and spent some time chatting. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to pour my lye solution into my base oils. The lye solution consists of distilled water, uh, sodium hydroxide, which is lye, and then I also put sugar in there to help with the bubbles. So I'm going to blend this up to right past emulsion, which is where the oils and the lye solution are combined and won't separate. <laughs> So now I'm going to add my fragrance oil and my kaolin clay. I add kaolin clay most of the time to my fragrance oils or essential oils. It really just helps soak up that scent. If you've ever used a clay for your like your face, like a face mask um, with clay in it, it's supposed to like absorb oil and stuff you know what I'm saying so that's what it does to the fragrance oil and it just really holds on to that it helps uh, sustain the scent a little longer and it adds something nice to the bar it's like a almost like a slip type not like a slimy but there's something really super nice that it adds to the finished product as well I've never worked with these particular fragrance oils before. No, 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 no. I've never used them in cold process soap. I've made them in other things, but this is a blend of lemongrass fragrance oil and white tea fragrance oil. So, yep, I think that white tea speeds it up and the lemongrass slows it down. So, you just never really know if you're working with a new fragrance oil. You know, I like to read all of the fragrance notes when I'm purchasing something new. If I've never used a fragrance oil before, I try to, you know, make sure I know what I'm getting into because some of them accelerate. It doesn't matter where you get the fragrance oils from. It doesn't mean they're a bad company if they have a fragrance oil that, say, accelerates or rices or something like that. It doesn't mean the fragrance company is bad. It just means the fragrance oil has some issues and that's normal. That's that's really normal because you're putting chemicals together. I mean, water is a chemical, right? It's made up of different atoms and when they combine with different things, it can have different reactions. So it's not a bad thing if a fragrance oil responds a certain way or you're batter responds a certain way it just means it's two chemicals combining and uh yeah my fragrance oil company of choice is the midwest fragrance company i have been working with them for less than a year but i am so super impressed by them like by far best company with a heart like, they're makers themselves. They test everything. I mean, a reputable company is going to test everything. But I love to see the personality of a company where it doesn't feel cold and distant. It's like, I love you. You're, you're a human being. I can relate to you. All right, so I'm going to stick blend these quick to make sure all of that colorant is combined really well. And the colorants are from Mad Micah's. One is called Bright Yellow Raincoat and the other one is Chartreuse. And I just blended those with some of my base oils from my batter before I put the lye solution in. Really like that. All right. So now I just try to get as much of the batter off of the stick blender as possible because if that 
um, solidifies onto there, it's a lot harder to clean off when you're doing the dishes. It's just like if you have applesauce or oatmeal, if you have little kids, or if you yourself, you know, I mean, adults can eat applesauce and oatmeal. Um, but if you don't clean that off of the dish and you just let it solidify, it becomes disgusting. It's like cement. So it's really hard to clean off. I try to do a lot of the cleaning as I go. Um, I'm going to see, I think I'm going to wait just a few minutes because I have another addition to this, but it's still very, very runny. So I'll come back in a couple minutes and we'll uh, finish this up and pour it and decorate the top. All right. So now I have some peppermint leaves. I don't know if I'm going to pour all of these in. I measured out one teaspoon, but that might just be too much. I learned that the hard way when I first started soap making, I just poured all these exfoliating things into the soap and thinking, oh, the more the merrier, it's going to be great. But it got so rough on my skin and it was like washing my skin with sticks. Who wants to wash their skin with sticks? I think this is good. I think this is good. This yellow setting up a little faster than this white is. And this green as well is not setting up quite as much as that yellow. But the thing with adding things that you want to be suspended in the soap, all of these little flakes of uh, tea leaves are going to either sink or float. So you want to make sure your batter is at the proper consistency so that it will suspend. I've done poppy seeds where the batter wasn't thick enough. It was really what runny like water and all of the poppy seeds were like in one area and um, coffee grounds the same thing, especially if it's something heavier like this is lighter. These uh, these tea leaves. But if you're going to work with something a little bit more dense or heavier, you really want to make sure that your batter is going to be able to suspend those items. All right, guys, so about five minutes has passed. I'm going to get some new gloves on. Took mine off because I <laughs> did some laundry while I was waiting. That is the beautiful part of what I do and how I do it. I don't need, like you don't need, super fancy stuff in order to do this. I'm asked all of the time what camera I use, what equipment I use for taking pictures and all of that. It's literally my phone. That's all I do. And my soap making area is nothing fancy. It's a multi-purpose room. We have our laundry in here. We have a small bathroom in here. We have the pantry in here. So uh, if I'm waiting for soap to set up and I'm hungry and grab myself something to eat, which is really nice. Um, but I started soaping in my kitchen and uh, really the sky's the limit. If you have creativity to make something work, you can make it work. You can make it work and it does not need to be anything fancy. So I am going to save just a little bit of this for the top design, probably about this much, because I do have an idea for the top that I want to try. Yeah, this white, the, the uncolored part of this soap is still not quite as thick as the green and the yellow, but I'm still going to go for it. I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be okay. I think it'll just take a minute to set up in the mold before I can do the top design, which I've got a fun one. this set up just a little bit do some more laundry and then I'll come back and try to plop that on the top all right guys I'm gonna shift this over a little bit if you can see that it's still fairly runny I did end up putting the green and the yellow on there I know this design already the top design is not going to look how I envisioned it because the consistency of the clear uncolored part and the green and the yellow it's not the same consistency so it's really hard to swirl at this consistency but 
I am still going to work with it because that green and yellow are still workable. It's just not going to be the same consistency. It's not going to, you know, whatever. It's still going to be gorgeous. And then I have some lovely botanicals to put on top. Botanicals is just fancy for dried flowers. But it sounds a lot better saying botanicals than dried flowers. Because dried flowers make you think of like a grandma who has a bunch of dead flowers in her house. And they're all brown and they smell like dust. But, you know. So I'm going to tap it down a little bit. That'll allow any air bubbles to come to the surface. And then I am going to clean up these edges. It's just a me thing. I like to have a nice clean edge of the soap mold. It just tickles me deep down and I love knowing that it's clean. So what I'm going to do, I may or may not film this, but I'm going to come back and texture this edge over here, kind of pull some of that soap up once this sets up a little bit. And then I'm going to add some dried calendula flowers um, or dried botanicals to that top on this side because it's this side has the color. This side is more of that clear, uncolored part. So um, it will stand out more. That's a good rule of thumb if you're trying to have something stand out on the top, to have two um, different colors that are going to, you know, like if I have a white glove on top of a white glove, there's no contrast there. But if I have a white glove and blue, you know, that's going to be more of a contrast. So if you can have something that is more of a contrasting color, if I put this right on top of the yellow, would it still be stunning? Absolutely. And if that was the look I was going for, great. But I want to have a little bit of a contrast in this particular design. So you really see these botanicals and they really stand out. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to film that, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll bring you back for the cutting when it's ready, which should be in about 18 to 24 hours. All right, it says may require more light. I think this is gonna be okay. It's relatively late at night, but I stay up late. And I usually don't let my soaps go overnight if I know they're gonna be hard as a rock in the morning because they're harder to cut. And with my particular recipe, Oh my goodness, look at how beautiful. I love it. It did go through gel phase. I think I have some glycerin rivers, even though I didn't use, I did not use uh, titanium dioxide. But hey, you know, it's because of this row of uh, botanicals, I'm going to lay it like this so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't cause drag marks. So let's see what we got. Just cutting this first little piece off so that both sides have the crinkle cut on it. And then I just kind of gently pull. I don't want to yank it. That is so pretty. Ooh, even the end piece. Super pretty. It smells so good. Really strong. If this retains its strong scent through uh, the Cure, this is going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous soap. I mean, it's going to be gorgeous anyway, but the scent is going to be too daffel. Here we go. There we go. So that green came out really nice. That yellow is nice and subtle. I love it. I love it. And I love the little specks with the mint. I absolutely love how this batch turned out. I did stamp the word botanical on the side along with my business stamp. Thanks for coming along for the making of this soap and I'll see you in the next video.